Welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 9. In this tutorial, we will look at recognizing revenue on fully profitable long-term construction contracts, but this time under the completed contract approach, which is applicable only to ASPE. This tutorial can be viewed independently of Tutorial 8, however it is recommended that you review Tutorial 8 on percentage of completion approach prior to viewing this tutorial. There are three basic learning objectives for this tutorial. The first is to determine the gross profit of a fully profitable long-term construction contract using the completed contract approach. Second, to prepare the required journal entries under the completed contract approach. And third, to show what a partial balance sheet and income statement presentation would look like for long-term construction projects under the completed contract approach. This tutorial continues on with the Putty Inc. example, so please make sure that you download that file so you can follow along. The tutorial will focus on requirement 2 of the Putty Inc. example and show how to determine gross profit, how to prepare the necessary journal entries, and prepare partial balance sheets and income statements under the completed contract approach, which is only acceptable under ASPE. This tutorial is structured a little more simply than tutorial 8, because it is much shorter, what we'll do is resolve requirement two items A through C together for each year. And so we will start by looking at 2020. So if you viewed tutorial eight, this will all look familiar to you. We're showing here what the data is as originally presented with the costs incurred in each year. Also showing the alternate presentation. So if you get a question that words things just a little differently, can show you the costs on a cumulative basis, cost to date, and what the percentage of completion resolution for calculating the gross profit was. Our emphasis, however, is only right here on the completed contract approach. You can see by the size of the box that the amount of work that's necessary under the completed contract approach is much, much lower than required for the percentage of completion approach. Completed contract is really simple. No gross profit is recorded until the final year. So 2020, zero gross profit, 2021, zero gross profit, and 2022, all of the profit on the contract that's calculated very simply is the contract price minus the total costs, $2,200,000. And that's it for calculating gross profit on a completed contract problem. So now we'll review the journal entries for those. And as presented early in tutorial eight, you might have noticed that a series of journal entries or the first ones were similar, or basically the same for both percentage of completion and completed contract. So the journal entries to record the construction in progress are million dollars in costs and the journal entries to record the billings. So we have 750,000 in billings to accounts receivable and construction or billings on construction and then the collection journal entry of 675,000. So what this does is leaves us with a balance in our construction in progress of a million, a balance in accounts receivable of 75 and a balance in the billings on construction of 750,000. And now once we have our account balances, we can determine what we would see on our balance sheet and income statement. For balance sheet here, 2020, 75,000 in accounts receivable, and this time only 250,000 in construction and progress. And in this case, the wording is just a little different because we're not recording any revenues. All we're doing from the journal entries is booking costs. So we have recognized costs in excess of billings. And if you go back and look at the previous slide, the balance in the CIP account was a million. The balance in the billings account was 750,000. They offset each other. So we have a net balance on the balance sheet of $250,000 for 2020, still classified as a non-current asset. In 2020, our income statement, zero construction revenue and zero in expenses and zero gross profit. We've incurred expenses, but we have not recorded them as construction expense. If you're not sure what's going on here, take a moment, pause and, and go back and look at the journal entry and you'll see that there is no journal entry to construction expense. 
We only did that with the percentage of completion method where we would record construction revenue and expense and the difference between the two is the gross profit. And with the completed contract approach, we don't do that until the final year. Now we'll look at the same thing again, this time for 2021. There's no point in showing the original slide that has all the data on it. You can go back and view that if you need to. We'll just focus now on the journal entries and the balance sheet presentation. So in the second year, again, as with the percentage of completion approach, our three journal entries are the same. Our $3.8 million in costs goes into the construction in progress. We have billings, so three million in billings and a debit to accounts receivable for $3 million, and $2.7 million in collections. So this leaves us with a balance of $4.8 million in construction in progress, $375,000 on accounts receivable, and $3,750,000 in the billings on construction. And these two accounts will be netted out against each other on the balance sheet. And so now for our 2021 balance sheet, we have accounts receivable of 375,000 and we have recognized costs in excess of billings of a million fifty. And that's the difference again between the 4.8 million in construction in progress less the 3.75 million in billings. Recall that this is now reclassified as current because the contract ends in 2022. And then on our income statement, because this is the completed contract approach, there is no gross profit or revenue or expenses to be recorded in any of the years until the year of completion. And finally, we'll finish up the problem for the year 2022. As we saw before, again, the same set of journal entries, this time to record the cost, the billing, and the collection. So another $3 million in uh, costs, billings of $6.25 million, debiting accounts receivable and crediting the billings on, on construction, and then finally a collection entry for $6.5 million, leaving us with a balance of $125,000 in accounts receivable, $7.8 million in construction in progress, and 10 million in billings on construction. But now our contract is finished. Here's where we have our last entry that differs from the percentage of completion approach. Now that we have our ending balances of 7.8 million in construction and progress and 10 million in the billings, you'll notice that the difference between these two is $2,200,000, which actually happens to be the profit on the contract. So what we must do is wipe out these accounts. So we're going to debit the billings for 10 million. We're going to credit the construction in progress for 7.8 million. And now we can record the construction revenues and expenses. So we know that the contract price is $10 million and the construction expenses are $7.8 million, which equals what we have in the construction and progress account. And so our journal entry balances, and we flushed out the construction and progress accounts and the billings on construction, leaving us with balances of zero there. And for our final balance sheet, we have accounts receivable of 125,000, no more costs in excess of billings, and now we have all of the revenue of $10 million and all of the costs of $7.8 million, and therefore all of the GP in 2022. So that's pretty much it for the completed contract approach. Let's talk about some points to remember for this one. So under ASPE, if our costs cannot be reasonably determined, then we can use the completed contract approach. And under this approach, we will never show profits until the year the contract is complete no revenues or expenses are recognized until that year of completion. Second, ASPE allows for the completed contract approach if a contract is determined by a single act rather than a continuous sequence of significant events. So a simple contract where only one thing is done rather than something that is compounded in terms of complexity like a bridge, uh, or road where you've got all different kinds of uh, events and, and uh, potentially overlapping elements. Third, again, this is the just to recap how data can be presented. This was shown in tutorial eight and we presented here. Your cost data can be presented on a cumulative basis, so cost to date, or on a non-cumulative basis, costs incurred in the year. 
In either case, you're going to have to do some simple math with these to get the information you need. If you're given data on a non-cumulative basis, you're going to have to add costs to derive the cost to date in order to calculate your gross profit. And finally, calculation of the percentage of complete is not required under this completed contract approach, so you do not have to worry about it. So this concludes tutorial 9 on using the completed contract approach under ASPE to account for a fully profitable long-term construction project. We hope you found it useful.